incident management process will you know this is uh, you might be using this process within your organization again um, mm. for example if you face issues uh, related to uh, your PC your keyboard your mouse your laptop um, if these are the issues then there is a, a service desk team that will help you out with all the hardware or software related issues you are facing right there's a specialized team to work that, uh, work on those issues so but then uh, they cannot work uh, you know uh, they cannot work without making a record of these changes that you work, want to do, uh, want them to do For example uh, the task that you assign to them has to be recorded somewhere and there is a full governed process for managing those types of tasks um, and the task that we are talking about is actually an incident an incident because in, in any sort of production environment or a running environment if there is some issue that you face right you have to report this as an incident because that has happened as an incident for example if your laptop crashed it, it start, stops working Right, so that's an incident and that has to be reported because there are different parties involved into this who need to take care and um, this asset that you are using this has to be uh, you know all the events related to this asset has to be recorded somewhere right so yeah. there is a full governance process for incident management that has to be followed uh, to resolve any any incident of any type right so so this incident management is a tool that you will be using to 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 resolve all those kind, uh, kinds of incidents that are generated within your organization right mm. let's look into how the incident management form looks like so the incident management form when we open it so it will look like you know it will have some information like uh, what is the incident number you can see the number field here right mm -hmm. then it will have information as who is the caller caller here uh, is in, in the sense uh, because see uh, the incident management is mainly used by the help desk personnel right uh, help desk mm -hmm. meaning um, your your uh, IT team or for bigger organizations uh, for organizations that has um, BPO wings or uh, the customer center wings so they will have the frontline people who will sit and uh, talk to uh, talk to the consumers and this is all their issues so that's the level one support that you have uh, for example different banks right uh, for example you have an account in Wells Fargo right and uh, you have issues you face some issues related to some transaction in your Wells Fargo account, right? So the first line of the first level of uh, resolution that you get is you call the customer care, Wells Fargo customer care, and discuss your issues, right? So the person who listens to your query or concern is the first line of defense there, and he's the first person, the help desk person, the customer care center person. Who might be using this incident management solution right so for that you have this caller uh, within the organization so you will, your information will be trapped here within the caller right Michael you there Michael can you hear me yeah I can yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, so that is the information about the caller. Then um, you have to fill in the information about caller's location, and caller's location will also be. So, caller's location can be populated automatically based upon the caller's information that you select because this is coming from the location table, right? So based upon the selection of the caller that you have here um, your caller's locations information is coming on for example if I change this to Alfonso Grisnell, Grislin see it has changed to West Deming Road Shanghai right 
if I change it to something else, Amos Lindman, it has changed to address in Frankfurt. So stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So the location mm -hmm. information comes from the location table based upon the user selection in the color table, a uh, color field, the location will be populated automatically, right? Now, mm -hmm. next few fields are very important for incident uh, and those are category. And category is important because while the service desk personnel takes your inputs for the incident, he has to find out what group of people has to work on this issue, right? Whether this is an inquiry or a help, uh, whether it is a request, whether it is a software related request or hardware related request, net network related or database request, or you can add additional categories within this as well, right? Additional categories mm -hmm can be added and you know how to add this. To add additional categories you have to do configure choices. You go there and you add you, as many choices as you want and that choices will be um, will be added to the category table there into the into the incident management application. Right? Yeah. So by having this category you isolate the change, uh, isolate the incidents and incident and then you assign it to appropriate personal uh, who who is the subject matter expert of that incident type or category, All right? So you have this category. Mm -hmm. Now based upon the category, the subcategories are populated, right? For example, mm -hmm. see if I have inquiry and help selected as a category, then I have antivirus, email, internet, internal application and some inquiry help as part of it, right? But if I mm -hmm. If I choose a different category, let's say I choose software ca category, then I have email and operating system, right? If I choose network, I have DHCP and DNS, right? So mm. items change here based upon the selection of the category values. And this this type of variable that we have here, the subcategory is a dependent field. Location is also a dependent field. It is dependent on the selection value of the caller. Subcategory mm. is also a dependent field and this is depending okay. upon the field which is category. Right? So yeah. these kind of fields are known as dependent fields. We will see how, mm. can cre how we can create the dependent fields in a bit. Uh, but this is how we select the dependent field. Uh, and let's, let's assume that the incident that the user is reporting is of network type and the issue is of subcategory DNS, right? Then yeah. you have to isolate the configuration item. What configuration item has to be worked upon? What configuration item is, uh, you know, where the incident is being seen, right? For which the user is reporting that incident. So I'll go ahead and pick this Apache server configuration item, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next two fields are impact and urgency. So by talking to the consumer, the, the help desk personnel will understand and ask what is the impact of this incident, right? And the input that the person get, gets from the consumer will be mentioned here, right? For example, mm -hmm. um, the consumer says that these two are the Im impact and urgency of the incident. So the so the help desk person will put as high high impact and high urgency, right? Why this is important, high impact and high urgency? This is important because there are service level agreements attached to each type of incident that you report, right? You understand mm -hmm. service level agreement, Michael? Yeah, I say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because right. when a company, uh, for example, came in uh, uh, buy some service from from one company, for example, availability should be 99%. That is part of SLA, right? Right, exactly. Right. Level exactly right. Yeah. In in terms of yeah. incidents, in in terms of incidents, uh, SLAs are very important. So, so this high impact, high urgency, and you know, critical is a type of SLA that we might have you know devised within our, our system and there is a time frame a timeline attached to each type of SLA and 
and uh, those incidents which are uh, recorded must be resolved within the timeline that is defined in the SLA, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's something that uh, you know forces us to look into these three fields and see if the impact urgency and priority is mentioned correct, correctly in this task, uh, in this incident or not, right? Oh. Now, next are open by, which comes by default, contact type, it could be phone, email, web service, uh, self-service or walk-in, right? State, there are different states, right? Um, it could be new, awaiting, active, awaiting problem, awaiting user info, awaiting evidence, resolved and closed, right? So it depends uh, how you see the incident and what is the state of the incident, right? For example, um, if it has to be reviewed by somebody else in L2 team, then you will put it as awaiting review. If it is a new one, you, you can put new. If the incident is active, meaning it is still being worked, the problem has not been resolved, you keep it active, right? Um, yeah. You, you can put awaiting user info if, for example, you are the caller, you call me as a, you know, I, I am the helpless person, you call me, I log this incident and I assign it to somebody else, right? Let's say I assign it to Fred and Fred needs some additional information. I have to call you again and get this input, right? Or I have to wait to see your inputs on the notes section if I have say, asked you questions, etc. So if that is mm. the case, you will put awaiting user info as a state of this, right? Mm. Mm. Next could be awaiting evidence, etc. Right? Um, and then uh, evidence is as in uh, if you are trying to replicate it uh, and you want to you want to have the steps steps to reproduce and that has to come from the consumer sector, right? So so that mm. is the state that, that you might put in, right? Additionally, mm. you can have you can have other states as well. For example, awaiting vendor information, right? Or the vendor information, for example, uh, if you are using Oracle as a product and there are Oracle product issues that needs to be resolved in order to fix any incident, right? Then mm. you have to reach out to Oracle support to get help from them because this is a product issue, right? There is a bug into the yeah. Oracle product, right? And they have to resolve it, right? So while the time they take it to resolve the product issue, the state that you might put is, uh, you know, awaiting vendor information, right? Or waiting for vendor, something like that, right? Because there is a dependency on the vendor itself. Mm. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. Right. So for, for your organization, you may see that there are different values than just the default values that ServiceNow has provided, right? So it's, mm. it's, it's mm. quite possible that these are these these values are not there within your organization or these are different values within your organization right now let's mm. let's assume that we have assigned this task to Fred Larry from the network team and mm. let's, let's put this short description here right you might have noticed that the moment I start typing mm. a short description, a few suggestions came here. Right, right. Right? If I remove this, the suggestions went away. Mm. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. If I cut mm. this, these go away. When I paste it, it starts searching. See searching text here? And after searching, mm -hmm. It gives, it gives you some suggestions here, right? And why is that? This feature that we have here is quite useful for the help desk personnel because when you are logging this incident into the system and you are the face of the customer, you are the first person the customer will reach out to you and you, you might suggest the customer that these are the workarounds for the issue or these are the known issues that we know that this is an issue and we are working on that, right? Stuff like that. There are cases when customers keep keep uh, 
you know keep calling you for a single incident right so in that case the helpless person can admit to the customer that there is an open issue that they are working on right or the helpless person can also say that we know that this is an ongoing issue here's a workaround that you need to work work upon use this workaround mm -hmm. that we fix this and as soon as we fix it we'll keep you informed right so these kind mm -hmm. of information will be displayed here so this is very handy information you can click in and you can open a pop up and see what are those information available here. Right. This one is a good example for outages. For example, the customer called for um, a software which is not working. Right, a web-based software, a web application which is not working. Right, and when mm -hmm. I try to log in, I see that there is an outage for that application. Right, so I can right away say to the customer that okay, this is un under maintenance right now. There is a scheduled outage that I am seeing for this application. So do not worry, it will be up in another 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something, right? Yeah. If you are facing performance issue, performance issues um, and the user is claiming that there is performance issues on the web application, you can refer to this one and say, hey, we know that there is some performance issue. Our database team is working on that. They are building some indexes or something on the table. And in another half an hour or one hour, you will see the performance of the application gets improved, right? Mm. Stuff like that. So this is pretty handy information because this is kind of a known known error database that you see here, right? So all the known information gets popped up here and you can refer it as a cheat sheet and let the customer know what the issue is and then, you know, you can give him a commitment or a time frame and stuff like that, right? So you have this handy search result available that comes on the basis of short description that you put here, right? Yeah. Now the notes. Uh, user call twice for DNS issue. This has been not as, as high incident now. Something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Related records. Now see, there is a problem field here. And this, this, this list reads as a related records, meaning mm. if this incident is a problem or not. See, there is a difference between problem and an incident, right? And people, mm -hmm. people often take both of these as the same thing, but these are not, right? Problems are the, all... Uh, I guess the problem is uh, the cause, the, the, the factor that affects the system, the, the incident to happen, right? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, kind of. But an incident is mm, mm. kind of. But there is mm. more to it. Uh, there is more to it. For example, mm. problem is also an incident, but an incident that affects multiple users, right? Yeah. Or multiple systems, right? Mm. If an, if a, if an incident is affecting multiple users at a time or is affecting a critical business component that becomes a problem, right? And that has to be resolved separately according to the problem management processes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Because yeah. then, um, incident can be worked as, uh, you know, incident can be resolved by providing a workaround as well, right? But problems, mm -hmm. you need to find out the root cause of it. And there's there should be root cause remediation in case of problem, right? Now, yeah. now, so the main difference between incident and problem will be the number of users affected and, uh, you know, the criticality of the system that you are working with, right? Oh, okay. Right, so here in the related records, you will see if, if this is related to some problem or not, right? If this issue the issue that you are reporting, the DNS issue, if it is uh, another issue that has been recorded by somebody else, right, uh, or by multiple users, that might be associated to a problem because it, it, could, be, mm. it could be possible that the problem record has also been op opened for this incident, right? If the problem mm. record has been opened for this incident, then a relationship of uh, this incident has to be maintained here with the problem, 
right? And for that, you will have to identify the problem request here, right? Mm. right. So for that, you have to put the related record problem here. Okay. Now, another type of it is change request. If you see that the change request, if a related change is existing, a related change to this incident, for example, um, if user reported this incident 30, 130, short description, uh, a DNS issue, and to fix this DNS issue, you think a change request will be required, right? So then you can put your change request number here, mm. right? And you can always tell the user that, you know, to fix this issue, a change request is required, and we have logged the change request, and that's in progress, and it will be fixed mm. within this time frame. Right? Mm -hmm. So you can yeah. have a reference to the change request here. Let's let's refer it to something this. Or the third third related records could be caused by change. For example, if change request forty two if change request forty two was moved to the production and when it was moved to production you started seeing this issue. Mm -hmm. Right. So this directly relates yeah. to the change request, and by putting the change request number here, it 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 shows that right. This is the change request. When we moved this to production, we started seeing this issue. Right. So that's mm -hmm. why you have caused by change. Right. So this incident is mm -hmm. caused by change number forty two. Right. So uh, we. Uh, uh, should we have to create a change request for that kind of case, or we'll pass that? Uh, no, 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 no. See, no, we don't. Okay. This this field caused by change is to be used when you you think that the in, the issue that user is facing was caused because we moved this change request forty two into production. Into production, right? Right. So that's why you have to relate it because there could be another. Mm -hmm change request uh, required to resolve that that change, right? Because we introduced a bug, bug into the system which caused this issue. All right? Yeah. Right, right. All right. So, so that's that. Closer information will be, will be put later. So I'm going to submit this. When I submit this, Oh, it was 130. Yeah, this is over. See, when I view, we when I open it, I see some additional information. The other information I supplied, which is okay. Mm -hmm. This is the search result which came here, which is okay. I see the notes section. I see my notes here. Mm -hmm. Problem is there. Closure information is there. Let's look into Fred Luddy's account and see how Fred Luddy is going to see this incident. All right. So I'm going to impersonate Fred Luddy. Mm -hmm. Because Fred Luddy is the person who has to work on this, right? Yeah. By the way, this Fred Lady, the Fred Lady is mm -hmm. CIO of ServiceNow. ServiceNow, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that thing. <laughs> and he does a lot of work for us. Yeah, he, he did. Every incident I have, <laughs> I have Fred Lady there. <laughs> Okay, I'll go here, I'll, or I can look into self-service and incidents, mm -hmm. and try to see if I have something here. No, it's not here. Right, assigned to Fred Luddy when I open this. 
This guy had a Runexus or something, I don't know. Oh. Uh, this red lady has more... Looks like it, he has admin access. Uh, I should have used mm. some. I, I should have used some other person. Some other user? Yeah, other user. No worries. So the uh, so idea is to see how that person will, you know. Wait, let's put... Let's try to put this. Boom. Mm. Oh, so this incident that I'm looking into right now, this is showing where Bo Ragri is a caller. But mm. we are looking into, we are looking into a different incident where this person is assigned to. So this will come into mm. the task list. Wait, uh, I should go into the home page to see this will be a assigned task to that person. Here we go. So I have logged in as Bo, yeah. Bo Raguri now. And when I scroll yeah. down, my groups work. I can see this incident 130 is coming as a task into my group. Mm -hmm. Right? So this mm -hmm. shows that I have to work on, I am Bo Raguri and I have to work on this incident. Is that. Right. Right. So you will you will get that incident here. Now you can click on this. You can go into and see information. Look into this short description. Right? Mm. And look into other informations. Look into the SLA, etc. And then you can start working on the incident and change the state accordingly. Right? This was, so yep. this was opened by system administrator, so this is not going to change. Incident number is not going to change. Open date is not going to change. Criticality is not going to change. Right? Rest of the things can be changed. Right? Um, mm. So, you can change this to, let's say, awaiting user info. And you can put some notes here. Can you... I, I'm asking, I'm asking mm. the caller some more questions. Can you provide steps to reproduce? Something like this, right? I'm posting yeah. it. Now before I post it, see what happened. <clears throat> System administrator created this incident. It was assigned to Fred Luddy. The configuration yeah. item was Apache. Right? Impact is high. The same state is awaiting evidence and this system administrator was opened and critical. Yeah. Then I, uh, system administrator put a comment here. User called twice for DNS issue. This has been logged, logged as a high mm. incident now. <coughs> when it was saved, an email was sent to fred.luddy at example.com. This is mm -hmm. a this is a look and feel of the email, right? Yep. Yep. Now, this email was also sent to Amos Lindman, right? Mm -hmm. Informing because he is the caller, 
he has to be informed that this incident was logged in under your name. So for that, he, one email has been sent to that person. So one email is sent to a person assigned, another email is sent to the person who requested the incident, right? And then I yeah. change, change the incident to Bo Raguri from Fred Luddy, right? And now yeah. Bo, Bo Raguri is putting a comment here. Let's copy this Amos Linman and go into his account. Hmm. When I go in here, now I can, because I am the caller, I can find this incident here. Right? right. But I am the caller, I can go into search service and I can look into all the incidents that I reported, right? So I click on this and I see that there is one incident that I reported to the customer care people and I can look into the status of it and see mm -hmm. this person is seeing a lesser amount of information here, right? Mm -hmm. This person needs to see this abstracted amount of information. Right? See, incident number mm -hmm. and the caller open closed, it is not closed yet, impact one, state awaiting evidence. So I'll go below and I'll see what is the activity on this incident. Right? I can see that today three four activity has been done and Bo Raguri is asking can you provide the steps to reproduce? I need to provide this information. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Do a step one, then step two, step three. Right? And I'm going to post it. Okay. Right? So this is the communication going on. You posted it. You can update it. You can leave. Now Bo will log into Bo will get an email or something. Bo mm -hmm. will log into his account now. Mm -hmm. Bo will then look scroll down and look into this incident. Who has a stuff to reproduce now? Right? Yeah. And see your email has been sent to this is this is how how, how it is happening. When you posted this uh, you know query for steps to reproduction mm. an email was sent to Amos. Right? Yeah. And it is appending the email, uh, you know, the comments, the activity that you are having. So this is having this information. So each time you put some additional comment that goes into the email mm. and the email is sent out to the people. Right? Now, yeah. you will, since you got the evidence, you started working on it. I just... And after working it, you will put, I just resolved it. Please verify. Right? And you change the state to resolved and you update it. Okay. While updating, you have to put this close code and close notes oh. in the closure information. So close code is, let's put solved workaround. Oh. You work around to fix. And then I'm going to update it. Mm. Right? If I go back, we will append more to the log, activity log. Mm. See? It was earlier awaiting evidence. I change it. When I save it, an email will go out to the user. The user will be informed that this has been uh, resolved. And uh, we didn't talk about this SLA here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? See, uh, when we started, there were uh, 
the stage for this SLA was paused. The stage for this SLA was paused. Right. Mm. Right. Because and, and these are two types of SLA. See, professional level SLA and service level SLA. Right. Okay. And when we talk about SLAs, there are timelines as attached to SLAs. We know. And. Mm. Let's go back. I'll quickly copy the incident number. I'll go back here. tab and in this tab I'm going to open the SLA mm. this has to be system administrator now here I want to go into SLA mm. and I'll go into SLA definitions and see network group response network group response has been identified as a SLA here this is a SLA okay. definition and it is it says that the duration for this SLA is 4 hours right meaning this type yeah. of this type of incidents has to be responded within 4 hours of time frame if you open this network group SLA you will get this information see it says mm -hmm. It is it is a operation level SLA that is associated to table incident, right? And mm. workflow attached to it is default SLA workflow. Mm. And the time mm. frame attached to it is 4 hours, right? Mm. And schedule source is no schedule. SLA will run 24 plus 7 as no schedule is selected, right? A schedule is yeah. important because let's say if you are working from US only and you have users in India right and uh, you are not supporting this SLA during India hours right so you yeah. have to you have to put a schedule source here right and then you have yeah. to identify the colors time zones as well so you have to put the time zone source because the calculation for time will be done accordingly and that's important right. because let's let's assume you are not using a 24 cross 7 support model right mm. and you work from 8 to 5 during your day and yeah. at at 445 an incident was reported that has this network group response SLA attached to it right and at 4 mm. 5 you leave your office right so you could not get time to respond to that incident by 5 p.m. that day right yeah and next mm -hmm. day when you come to office at 8 you have actually passed more than 8 hours 12 hours because it was reported at 445 and now you are able to see on the very next day at 8 a.m. that an incident what was reported now the question right. is now the question is in this case have you breached the SLA? No, you haven't. No, no. You haven't because we have to factor out the working durations, the working timings as well, right? So the mm. ty types of SLAs we define, we also identify these these factors. Whether um, we are considering the users' work our policies, or we are considering the support teams work hours timings etc right so this type yeah. of information has to be supplied within the SLA um, when you identify that SLA so in this case you have not breached the SLA uh, service level agreement that you have here, right mm. but if you are into a support model and the SLA says irrespective of user irrespective of the support team's work timings I still need this mm. incident 
be resolved in four hours time frame then it doesn't matter you leave at 5 p.m. or you leave at 445 44 45 p.m. if the incident was reported as 445 at 845 in the evening the SLDA will be considered breached if it is not being worked by anybody from your team. Right? So that could yeah. be the other case. So that's mm -hmm. why SLAs are important because to SLAs workflows are attached and when this SLA is breached this what workflow will automatically be at, uh, started, triggered and then you will get notifications there will be escalation methods that will be followed uh, people from different uh, you know, the uh, people who are there in the workflow will be uh, receiving notification that these are the SLAs, these are the incidents for which the SLA is breaching, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, that, that needs a, a separate remediation because the, then you will have to find out what is the root cause, why you have missed this SLA, etc. Right? And to mm -hmm. SLAs are also attached some penalties, right? Organizations might have to uh, pay fines if they uh, keep breaching SLAs etc. Right? So there has to be uh, a root cause analysis for why you have breached those SLAs. Right? Yeah. Alright, um, so now that you have completed these two task SLAs right, and you have marked this as resolved, the user Amos Lindman can go ahead and if I go into and impersonate as the most Lindman again mm. and I can go into my incident and I go into incident open my incident when I open my incident I see the state has changed to resolve right yeah. right Mm -hmm. You can put message as verified. Thank you. Right, something like this. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you have this close incident button with you that you can mark as incident close. Right? Now when you click on this close incident, this incident will be permanently closed. Right? Yep. So you have that incident permanently closed. If you go back, now if you go back to this person, this is Bo Raghiri who was the person assigned to this. You can reload this form and now you can see that this has been closed. It's closed, and, yeah. And you get the log here. Right? So this is a typical flow of how incident will be resolved and how different people see the incident. For example, the caller will see a different view, the person assigned to will see a different view um, mm. and you as an administrator are able to see everything for that incident. Right? Mm. Now, let's right, back, right. now let's come back to the dependent fields. Right? I'm going yeah. to I have to impersonate that system administrator. So what system administrator I have to impersonate to system administrator. So to to add a new dependent value. Let's let's take an example of inquiry or let's take an example of software. Right? We have for software we have email and operating system as subcategories. Mm -hmm. Let's let's try to add a subcategory which is sample subcategory sample software. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for that you will do configure choices. You go into subcategories. When you go here, I don't want to do this here. I want to do right click and I want to do configure dictionary because I have to put a dependent field here. So I'll be doing configure 
dictionary and when I do it see there is a dependent field here yeah dependent field right right so I am looking into the dictionary values of subcategory I am looking into dependent field and it is showing that dependent on field is category meaning uh -huh. the subcategory is dependent on the category field right mm. and then you will go to yeah. choices right you have this dependent field yeah. here and for this subcategory you have different choices you can see there are 24 choices identified for this right mm. for example antivirus yeah. CPU, DB2, DHCP, Dwest, etc. These are choices. But then, these choices, these choices have these values. But these choices are dependent on these dependent values. Mm. Let me bring, let me bring this one up a little bit. So I am going to bring this dependent value here. Now you can see. down a bit. Now you can see antivirus is dependent on inquiry. Meaning when in the category field you select inquiry you will get antivirus. When you select hardware you will get CPU. Now this time the dependent field that dependent field that we have is software and when you select software we must also see a new value which is sample software. Right? Mm. I am going to take the value for the dependent field is software all in small. So I am going to create a new choice value here. Right? And the choice mm -hmm. value will be I'll name it as sample software and the value will be software. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And then dependent value is software. This is important because this is dependent on the software field. So I'm going to put software as a dependent value here. I'll go to scroll down, I'll scroll down and then I'll try to find out sample software and it is rightly associated to the software field. You see that? Mm. Yeah, it's associated to the software, right. Now I'm updating, uh, I'm updating it and then I'll go back to this field, I select inquiry. When I select inquiry, I get the values related to inquiry. When I select network, I get values related to network. Mm. I do not see the sample software here. But when I select software, I see sample software as a value. Right. And that's because we identified sample software as a value into the subcategory field but then we also associated associated it to a dependent value which is software right yeah so sample software will only come when you have software as a selected item mm -hmm. in the category field right that's correct right so that's how you define dependent values within your system uh, you yes. have to identify yeah. mm. you have to identify the dictionary item you have to isolate the category uh, you have to isolate the dependent value and then you have to create a choice item and relate it to the value with, on which this is dependent. All right? All right? Yeah. So that's pretty much about incident and that's pretty much about uh, dependent fields. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll request you to look, in, look into these uh, 